eloquent men, all right? They're celebrities. They're well-known. They're well-respected in society. They're exalted in this society, right? But a righteous man like us, we're going to know when they're slipping because we're going to see what they're doing. You can, uh, you can see some of the letters. These are Greek letters. You can actually read some of, if you know Greek, you can see some of the Greek letters right here. In the Gospel of Thomas, two very important keys. This was written uh, right around 300 uh, years after the time of Jesus. In this Gospel, okay, so here, here's what we're doing. We've been in the Buddhist monasteries in Tibet, and they're telling us that we must, that feeling is the prayer, one. Two, that we must feel as if our prayers have already been answered. Okay, and now we're in an Egyptian monastery with the texts that used to our tradition before they were edited, and we're going to look at the instructions that tell us how to do that. You okay if we do that? Is that good? Okay. Gospel of Thomas. If you have a copy of the Gospel of Thomas, this is verse 106, translated from the Nag Hammadi Library. And if you do not have a copy, it's in our books, uh, and you can, you can go to any library and pick this up. Verse 106. Look at what the lost Gospel of Thomas says. It says, When you make the two thought and emotion one. So the Gospel of Thomas is talking about thought and emotion. It's saying when you make your thought and your emotion one, look at what happens. You will say to the mountain, mountain move away and the mountain will move away. Saying that when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. The tumor that disappeared in the woman this morning, that is an example. When those practitioners had the thought of the woman being healed and the feeling and the emotions were all one, the mountain moved, the tumor disappeared. Okay, so this is one place. Now, secondly, when you make the two one, what are they talking about? What are the two? Let's go back to our image. The two, thought and emotion. When the two become one in our hearts, we create the feelings in our bodies. When thought and emotion become one, and you'll see how to do that in just a minute. Let's go back to the Gospel of Thomas, another verse. Now this is verse 48. It says almost the same thing. This was so important that it was recorded at least three different times in the same Gospel. Look at what this says. If the two make peace with each other in this one house, when Jesus is talking about the house or the temple, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Precisely, you. You are the house. You are the temple. If the two make peace with each other in this house, if thought and emotion become one, if they make peace with each other in this house, look what happens. They will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. He's telling us again, in a completely different verse, how powerful it is to marry thought and emotion. But they still haven't told us how. How do you do this? That's the next piece. In the early Christian Bible, your Bible today, there is a passage. How many have heard, ask and you shall receive? Have you heard that before? Ask and you shall receive. Have you heard that? I know people that ask and ask and ask and nothing happens. Because the asking is not done with the voice. The asking is not done, please, please bring this to my world. That's not asking. To ask, we must speak to the field, to the divine matrix, in the language that the field recognizes. 
in a language that's meaningful, the field doesn't recognize our voice, it recognizes the power of our heart. Remember this morning, our heart, we have a feeling, creates electrical waves, magnetic waves. That's the language the field recognizes. So when you create the feeling in your heart as if your prayer is already answered, that creates the electrical and the magnetic waves that bring that answer to you. And you're going to see this in just a moment. Ask and you shall receive. So this is why the scripture says this right here, man, once again. Verse 7, an eloquent man is known far and near, but a man of understanding, okay, knoweth when he, what he slippeth. All right, so this is what we watch for. Yeah, we see what you're doing. 